Well, welcome to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures. My name's Alex, and welcome to me doing something a bit stupid. So, this is Scotland. To be particular, this is the sort of southeastern side of Loch Etiv. And, well, I'm on a bike. There are two reasons I'm on a bike. One, I spent all my money on the Arctic trip. and I need to do some collaborations to earn some money back. And this is a combo. Two, I don't enjoy cycling at all. But during the Arctic trip where I walked 50 kilometers to the Russian border in the winter. I did turn the heating on in the van about an hour ago, so it should be nice and toasty. I tried out one of the bikes I was borrowing and it was a skinny tire bike. And that's not very good in snow. Probably not the best idea to try and do 19 kilometers or 40, 38 kilometers there and back again. I also tried the bike. Not in this uh, conditions. And I made a joke about it. Anyone's got a fat tire bike and wants to sponsor me? Anyone want to uh, sponsor me a fat electric bike? Reach out. And people did. So I said yes. And for the first time in my adult life, I now own three bikes and I don't enjoy cycling. This thing, which is a Cy Russia Olivia, Olivia? I'm gonna pronounce it all wrong the entire time. Mis Mispronounce ventures. Has made me enjoy cycling. I have been out about 40 miles so far on this, blasting up Scottish forestry tracks and just having a brilliant time. So I thought I would combine my worlds of outdoor and making stupid videos. And this is what it's gonna be. Let me show you what I've got. Right, um, quick few things about this bike. It's UK road legal. It can be turned into private land use as well, which means it's got a motor output limited to 250 watt. It's also got no twist throttle, although you can get one to install if you wanted to use it on private land. Uh, and it's limited to 15.5 miles per hour. Again, that could be unlimited, but I've kept it in the limited mode. So it's perfectly legal for me to ride this on the UK roads and cycle paths, which is what I'm doing here. The forestry tracks and stuff in Scotland, you can't take your normal vehicle on, but an e-bike, up to the UK legs, regs, so it doesn't count as a motorised vehicle. No issues at all. But enough of this. All I've basically done is got two companies, Sight Russia and Blue Etty, power banks involved. So opposed to making a review, which I don't want to make and you probably don't want to see, I thought we would make a power pannier, which is what's on the back of the bike. We'll ride the bike until we we'll run out of power, then we'll camp, charge the, charge the bike up, and go on an adventure. And so far, it's gorgeous. But let's get some cycling done, because it's getting towards the end of the day.
I mean, this is just absolutely stunning. So, the plan. Currently, riding along the tracks of the southern, sort of southeasterly side of Loch Etiv. We're going to ride these tracks until, we, until they run out, or run out of easy ones. That happens about Glen Kingless, which may or may not be how you pronounce it. And then we're going to ride up the Glen, which looks like there's a track up there. And look at the distance of that track. The battery will run out before we would get anywhere. And then we'll camp. But I tell you what, this steep gravel terrain is absolutely easy to ride on. Oh, that's steep. Oh dear. Oh. I'm not very good at cycling. Now, I'm not a very skilled mountain biker. I had to buy myself a new helmet. I had to buy myself a helmet. Bought myself some tools. I bought myself some inner tubes. 20 by four. I don't know how to change inner tubes. I'm sure I can go on YouTube. Although it's hard to get hold of, I found out. 20 inch by four inch fat tire inner tubes. Whee! But, Oh, bloody minute, that just looks good, doesn't it? That's just, that just looks stunning. How good is that? I would say I bought some gloves, but I actually found these gloves in a car park. Oh. Bridge, Ford, bridge, Ford, bridge, Ford, bridge, Ford, bridge, Ford, bridge, Ford, Whee! Oh, oh, sand. Weight-wise, it might look quite heavy. I mean, arguably, it is a heavy bike. It's a uh, 32, I think, 34 kilos worth of battery, which is, I guess, not too bad. It's quite light. It feels very, very light when you're on it. And to be honest, um, the max payload is 150 kilograms. I weigh, what do I weigh? I weigh 75 kilos. So. 75 kilos of half the payload. The power banks are about eight kilos each, plus my camping gear, overnight gear. I think I've probably got about a third, 25 kilo, maybe a 30 kilo um, added payload. So I'm probably about 50 to 45 kilos still underneath the, uh, the maximum payload for this bike, which is quite good. It does feel a bit heavier after I've put this um, power pannier on it, as I'm calling it, but still quite movable. And to be honest, I'm pedaling up a steep hill currently. Um, I'm going 11 miles per hour. And we're not even in the lowest gear. And I'm not breaking a sweat. It's very, very easy. Which apparently I've been told is cheating in cycling terms when you're an e-bike. I ain't competing against anyone, and otherwise I don't like cycling, so I'm happy to cheat. Oh, it's just so bloody stunning. If I get the drone out every second, or I'll do tripod shots, I ain't gonna get anywhere for tonight. These gears are very useful. I mean, I don't really know how to film a bike video. I just thought I would kind of do it the same as do my van ones. Talk rubbish to camera, and, uh throw some scenic shots. As I am completely ignorant to bikes, they do uh, these fat tires and 20, 26 inch version for a very similar bike. Um, 
So what's the bonuses of 26 inch over 20 inch fat tires? If someone, bike people can tell me why, uh, you know, would it be better? This is just stunning. Uh, I need to get some tripod shots. favorite documentaries or series on TV was Long Way Around, The Long Way Down, starring Charlie Borman, Ewan McGregor. But now I'm trying to film a bike related video where I've got to go back and forth. I can see why Claudio, the cameraman, the third part of the bike team, has an unbelievably difficult job. I mean a really good job obviously, but every time walking, doing a riding pass shot, going to fetch, going back to the bike. And then after going back again is hard work. Well, the camera angle squint because it's on the handlebars of the bike and I don't want to take it off for another tripod shot. The path ends down here. That goes to the top of Loch Etif, into Glen Etif and then into Glencoe or Radek Moor. Where I want to go over there is Glen Kingless. But I think I might ride down there first, touch the sea, because this is a uh, sea loch, and then we'll head up the hill. And after we head up the hill, we are just going up there until the battery is flat. The battery is currently, I think, 70 odd percent. under repair. Well, it looks repaired, so let's go for it. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, it's actually really quite nice to ride on. Oh, this is an old bit. Oh, uh, okay, that doesn't feel as good. Oh, it's a bump. Ooh. They look seen it picturesque, don't they? Okay. Oh. All right, I think this gets me to the beach. Oh dear. Oh, oh that's a skeleton. Oh. Bumpy, 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 rock. Bumpy, 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 bumpy. Oh, bump. One of the reasons I am liking an e-bike, I wouldn't normally just walk 12k down a gravel road or a forestry road because it wouldn't be that enjoyable to take all day. I think like an e-bike, I can go out on in an hour or two and just blast around, come back. I've not, I'm not massively sweaty or knackered. 
yeah, I am loving, I'm loving this. Let's have a quick look around. Do we think I can, do we think I can uh, use the fat bike on this sand and gravel? I think it's gonna fall off. Ooh. What's that? That is a pretty MacGyver homemade canoe. That's pretty cool. Right. Shall we see if I can ride this fully laden bike onto the sand? And then the rest of this video will probably be getting unstuck. Oh, this is gonna be, this gonna get stuck so quick. Oh God. <laughs> Okay, no, I'm not surprised. I think if it was empty, I probably could have. Um, this brings up one of the other useful features of the bike, which I think most e-bikes have. Oh my, oh. Right, like many e-bikes, it has a walk feature. If you hold down the little, the minus button, then uh, it goes into sort of walk mode, which I think is like six kilometers an hour. And we can get it off. That made recovery so much easier. Well, this would be a lovely place to camp. But the point of my video, <laughs> is to flatten the battery and it's still on 74%. So we're going that way up the Glen and we're gonna ride until the battery runs out. Hopefully it doesn't take too long because it's gonna be dark in a while. Right, well, let's, uh, maybe I should get a bit faster before I do silly talky camera shots like this. Leave this lovely beach, bumpy bit, gravelly bit, oh goodness me. Right. And let's get up Glen Kingless. Right, let's go up Glen Kingless. This is a review video, so I should, I'm should. i gonna talk about the bike. Uh, I don't know about bikes, so I'll tell you what I know about this bike and you can tell me in the comments. Oh, this is quite bumpy. Oh, it is bumpy, which brings me on to a good segue to this point. Um, Suspension-wise, this is full sus. It's got springy ones on the front and there's a little twisty thing, which makes it harder or less hard. And then the, the rear suspension is air suspension. Right, like riding around on all this, these gravel, it's gravel, but it's also like boulders and rocks. It's really, and big potholes. It's really quite comfortable. It's really quite comfortable. Drone's going away because um, the midges are starting to come out. So I need to keep riding to stay out of the midges. We're still going. And this glen is quite lovely. This track is also very easy. I think I saw on Google on um, 
Google Maps or satellite imaging. Uh, it's quite a big track for a while, then it starts to peter out. So I kind of just want to get to when it starts to peter out. We are currently on 35% power, and I've been and I've been in um, maximum assist most of the time actually. Quite often I'm finding when I'm riding this, I have to uh, drop it, put it into the the highest gear, gear seven, just so there's resistance. And after you're up to speed, about 15 mile per hour, your legs aren't really doing much. Well, there's no resistance, it just feels a bit strange, so. Oh, camera's going for a bit of an adventure. Well, let's put this away for a little while and uh, carry on riding up the Glen. Well, I think we're getting to where the track on the Glen runs out. We're currently on... Well, it goes up, so I was down to 18%. And now it's, yes, it's going up again because we've, I guess, because the voltage is settling. Although, maybe it's the BMS doing it. So we've still got a ways to go before we can flatten it. So, those steep tracks, if the bike wasn't laden down, they would be no problem at all to ride up, having, uh, having done that on some of the other days. Okay, I can't get it up this hill. Not with his weight on it. Uh, down to about 16%. So, I think it'd be reasonable if I go camp uh, somewhere about there. And then, right back in the morning, let's get out of here. God. Right, well, this is an e-bike packing adventure. We've done the bike bit, let's do the packing bit, the, the camping bit. Oh. Right, first things first, let's get these shoes off. Get my slippers on. Oh, it's better. I have been here five minutes and the midges are already on me. Excellent. Excellent. Come to Scotland. First off, come prepared, time to get a beer open. If I know where, uh... where's my bottle opener? Where is my bottle opener? We'll uh, put some bug spray on, because I don't like midges. Anyone coming to Scotland? 
Avon Skin So Soft, so much better than anything deep based. Right, before I get absolutely annihilated by the midges, let's talk about the other part of this video. So, Bluetti got in contact with me when I was brain scheming the video for this bike, which was to do a, long, a longer ride, a bit of an adventure. And they offered me their AC60, which is a 400 watt hours power bank, and the B80, which is their, also one of their new power banks, which is the expansion battery. So this is about 400 watt hours. The other side is about 800 watt hours. They're joined at the back, so they work all together. This has got a 600 watt inverter, and the bike battery itself is 850 watt. So I can fully charge the bike off these and have some spare. Plug it in, plug it into the charge port on the bike. And away we go. The other reason I asked for these two units particularly is they're IP65 rated, which means dust and water is no problem, which is good because I built the panning rack so they're on purposely exposed. But uh, let's get them off the bike for now. So I also did bring one of my 200 watt solar panels in case I got to camp not really late, of which I didn't. Ugh. All right, a little camper set up. Oh, let's get the induction stove done and let's get dinner on. Good news everyone, I found my van keys and they've got my bottle opener on. Right. Now we're camping. Well, I just think this is brilliant. And I hope if you've got this far in the video, you know I'm not being serious about all of this. It'd be far lighter and cheaper to take a gas stove and to buy a spare battery for the bike. But this is not a smart idea. It's a silly idea. It's a stupid idea. And it's a fun idea because I'm having a great time. E-bike packing, yeah! Good fun, with a power bank to charge the bike, yeah. And charging is one of the interesting ones. So I bought that solar panel and I know it's dark, it's not gonna, it's not gonna charge. But that charger is only 150 watt for the bike. And that's gonna take about six hours to charge it to full. The solar panel is 200 watt and I can get about 160 to 180 watt out of it on a good sunny day. So when I've tested it, the power banks have been taking in more power from the solar panel than is going out into the bike. So yeah, you could come out here and you could charge your e-bike and you could be lazy and you could save for a day. Not realistic, but it works. However, these power banks could be charged to all 1,200 watt hours on AC in about an hour and a half to just to two hours. So if you, went to a pub or a cafe and you sneakily plug those in, charge them back up. And in the evening, you can have your electric camping and charge the e-bike before you go to bed. And I like that stupid idea. Oh. Another little byproduct is um, if you stack them, like this bit, it's your camping chair. You don't have to bring another, you don't have to bring a camping chair. And to be honest, the light's been quite helpful. Well, speaking of lights, I'll show you something later on. Right, to the uninitiated, this may look like I'm using a spanner which came with this bike as part of the toolkit to turn the burgers over. And it's not because I forgot all my cooking utensils. But unlike the Arctic trip where I forgot my mug, I, uh, I bought a mug this time. But then again, I brought a beer, so I don't need a mug. Mm. To anyone watching, these are midges. These are a, uh, a national pastime of Scotland and they are irritating. I'm currently being annihilated by them. So uh, I do hope you are enjoying. Art is suffering or something. 
So this uh, induction stove is actually 800 watt, uh, but I've run it on a slightly lower mode. So, because uh, the inverter on this unit is only 600. Um, the, the a bit over 600 because I'm also running the DC because I'm actually charging the phone whilst I'm filming on it. Oh, the midges are getting bad. Although I presume if you use induction, it would actually be safe to cook inside your tent because um, there's no carbon monoxide given off on like a normal stove. I'm not saying I forgot my um, Leatherman, but i use a spanner to cut my brioche buns, only the best here. Oh, these midges are annoying. It's in my eyes. Go away! They're ready and I want to eat. So, some mayonnaise. Read them. Oh, all the midges are fighting. Voila, burger. Right, I'm turning the camera off, that light off, and I'm going to go in the tent and eat my food. Right, I'm hiding in the tent to have my food because the midges are just getting too much in a minute. Oh, I love the midges. Right, one of the things I will show you about the bike is it's got its normal light. If you just hit one of the buttons, and there you go, you can see how many bugs there are. And because it's me, I had to do some custom wiring. So I wired in a 48 volt to 12 volt. Um, step down converter and put some aux beam lightings on. And you can see how many bugs there are. I am getting absolutely annihilated. Oh, I'm going to get into bed. We'll pick this up in the morning and I'll put the bike back on charge. Help me. Right, tucked up in my sleeping bag. The bike is outside, charging, power banks are charging up. I did let about three million midges into the tent, um, which is less than ideal. And yeah, I'm gonna apply, I think some copious amounts of tiger balm to deal with all these bites then. Go to sleep, see you in the morning. And we're gonna end part one there. So stay tuned for part two. And I hope you've enjoyed this different style of video. I like doing collaborations and working with brands, but I don't like making normal box and review videos. So I hope the whole concept of me using brands, partnerships and deals to facilitate silly adventures. In this case, using the Cy Russia bike, which for me, bikes are completely alien and I actually really like this bike. It's a lot of fun and I've been using it quite a lot off camera as well. And everyone knows who watches this channel, I enjoy power and I enjoy electrical projects. So Bluetti's AC60 and B80 batteries have been good fun. And the whole electric e-biking concept has worked. So stay tuned for part two. If you want to know more about the Cyrusha bike, look, check out the links below. And if you want to learn about the Bluetti AC60 and B80, there's links for those in the description. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, feel free to like and comment or tell me something about bikes I didn't know which might be helpful for other bike packing trips. And if you want to see more of my silly adventures, feel free to subscribe to the channel. But thank you again. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.